So it's the last video on gameplay in the RPG series, at least for now. Congratulations if you've gone this far. Today we are going to be doing combat. And after that, it's really up to you. Sebastian will still be doing some more videos on implementing graphics. He'll be adding a cool enemy model and doing ragdoll effects and all that fun stuff. But I've actually covered all of the stuff that I wanted to cover. Which also means that if you've been following along this far, you should have made some pretty cool games as well. I would really like to see what you guys have made using this series. So if you haven't already, tweet me a link or a picture or a gif or something on Twitter at Bracky's tweet. That would be so cool to see. Other than that, let's get into the final episode. So first let's go to scripts and let's right click, go create C sharp script. And let's create a script that will sit on both our player and our enemy called character combat. Let's then select our player and enemy and drag it on there. Now let's open up the script in Visual Studio. And the first most essential thing we want to have in here is a public method for attacking. So public void attack. And this is going to take in a character stats, which is going to be the stats of the target that we want to attack. So let's call this target stats. And now we can actually go straight in here and write target stats dot take damage and then give it some amount of damage. However, the amount of damage that we want to do completely depends on the attacking character's stats. So we also want a reference to this character's stats. To that, let's create a private variable of type character stats. Let's call it my stats. Then inside of the start method, let's set my stats equal to get component of type character stats. Of course, we then have to make sure that any object with a character combat also has a character stats component attached. And we'll do that by using require component up here. Type of character stats. Now down here, instead of writing 20, we can go my stats dot damage dot get value. And that's the very foundation of our character combat. If we save that and go into Unity, we need to find the place where we trigger this code. But we want that to happen whenever we interact with the enemy. And remember, the enemy component, which derives from interactable, has a method called interact, which is called whenever we interact with it. And we've even inserted a comment here where we say attack the enemy. So let's open up the script and here we can now trigger an attack. But to do that, we need a reference to our player. Well, here we can use the fact that in the previous video, we created a player manager that always has a reference to the player. So up here, let's create a player manager, call it player manager. And in the start method, we can set player manager equal to our player manager dot instance. Then when we decide to attack, we can get a reference to the character combat on our player. To do that, we use player manager dot player and we then call get component of type character combat. Let's store this in another variable called character combat. And we can just call this something like player combat. Then just to make sure that we are safe, we are going to check if player combat is not equal to null, in which case we can go ahead and attack. So player combat dot attack. And here we need to specify the target stats for our player. Well, that is of course going to be the enemy itself. So let's create another component of type character stats. Let's again call this my stats. And in the start method, we simply set my stats equal to get component of type character stats. And just like we did in the last script, we make sure to always have this component on the object. So now down here, when we attack, we simply want the player to attack my stats. If we now save this and go into Unity and hit play, we should be able to right click on our enemy and our player will walk right up and start interacting. And right away we can see that the enemy takes damage based on our player's damage. If we go back here and equip say the helmet, which I know gives a damage buff and then equip it, we can see that we now do a greater amount of damage. However, we can actually spam this button quite a bit. And as you can see, if we keep doing that, our enemy will die. That's all fine and dandy, but we probably want a cooldown on our attack. To do that, let's open up our character combat and let's create a public float called attack speed. Let's just default this to one. Now here you get to set an attack speed for each individual character. But since we already have character stats implemented, you can easily make attack speed influenced by the character stats. That's something that a lot of games do. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to put it here. Then we can have a private float and we'll call this the attack cooldown. This is going to default to zero. Then every frame, so inside of update, we want to reduce attack cooldown a tiny bit. So we subtract by time.delta time. 
and when we then decide to attack, we check if our attack cooldown has gone below zero. And if it has, we are ready to attack again. So we can go ahead and call take damage on our target stats. Right after we attacked, we also want to set our attack cooldown back. So we'll set attack cooldown equal to one divided by our attack speed. So the greater the attack speed, the smaller the cooldown. Awesome. If we were to save this now and go into Unity and hit play, we should see that we can still attack. But if we spam this button now, you can see it says interacting with enemy a lot, but only every one second it's going to say enemy takes two damage. So our system is working. Let's get rid of this annoying spam by opening this up in Visual Studio and just commenting out this message. So now no matter how fast I click, it's only going to take damage every one second. And we can adjust this for our player and our enemy independently. But our enemy isn't attacking at the moment. To change this, let's go to our enemy and let's open up the enemy controller. In here we've actually already specified the place where we want to attack the target. To do that we first need a reference to the character combat sitting on our enemy. So you guessed it, we're going to go in here and create a character combat variable called say combat. And then in the start we can set combat equal to get component of type character combat. And then when we decide to attack we can go combat dot attack and again we need to give it a target stats. For this we can use our target variable. We can simply go target dot get component of type character stats and we can store this in a character stats variable called target stats. Just to be sure that we don't get any errors we'll check if target stats is not equal to null in which case we are ready to go ahead and attack and now we can input target stats into our attack method. If we now save this, go into Unity and hit play, we can then walk up to our enemy and once it gets close enough, you will see it attacking every one second. And if it keeps doing this long enough, you can see that our health will finally reach zero. And it's going to say player died. But currently nothing happens. That's because inside of our player stats, we're not overriding the die method. So here let's create a public override void called die. We'll call base.die and then we can go ahead and kill the player in some way. This could be done by playing a player death animation followed by a game over screen. You could pull up a prompt allowing the player to respawn for some penalty or you could simply restart the level. In our case we're just going to restart the scene but you can really fill in anything you'd like here. But I don't think restarting the scene makes a lot of sense inside of our player stats method. Instead let's call a method on our player manager dot instance called say kill player. Now we can open up our player manager and here let's create a public void called kill player and all we're going to do here is reload the scene. So we'll be using unity engine dot scene management and to load a new scene we'll go scene manager dot load scene and the scene that we want to load is the currently loaded scene. So scene manager dot get active scene and now we have to do dot build index and close that off. So now whenever the player dies it's going to call a method on the player manager called kill player and this method is then going to restart the scene. We have zero delays or animation in here, I'll leave that up to you to add. Now when we play, get closer to our enemy, I'm just going to select him and bump up the damage so this won't take forever. We can see that as soon as we get killed, our level gets restarted and we're back to default. You can also maybe see a slight bug with our lighting. This is something that only happens in the editor, but if it's annoying you a whole lot, you can always go to the lighting panel and disable auto generate and then hit generate lighting. Now if we hit play and get closer to our enemy and die once more, you can see that our lighting stays the same. However, you will have to make sure to go into our lighting panel and regenerate lighting every time you change something about your lighting or environment. Just keep that in mind. I'm just going to set it back to auto generate. So now our combat system is working. There are just a few things that we want to add in order to make it easier when we add combat animation. I think Sebastian is going to appreciate that. One thing is under character combat we need to add an attack delay because currently our attack happens immediately and in reality when dealing with attack animations you probably don't want to do damage until we reach the point in the animation where we actually do the slicing. So let's create a quick coroutine that will allow us to delay our damage. To do that we'll write i enumerator, we'll call this do damage, we'll take in a character stats, just call this stats and a float with the delay. Then we'll wait x amount of seconds as specified by our delay. So we'll write yield return new, wait for seconds. 
and we'll put in delay. And now we are ready to do the damage. So let's take our line up here where we call take damage and paste it down here. And here it's not called target stats, but just stats. And then up here we can simply trigger the coroutine. So we'll write start coroutine. It's called do damage. We put in our target stats. And we can put in a delay of say one second or even better, let's actually make this into a variable. So let's create a public float attack delay and set this equal to something like 0.6 by default. We then take our attack delay and put it down here and then round off the line with a semicolon. Now when we save, go into Unity and hit play. Because we don't have attack animations yet, the change is going to be very subtle. But you should see that when we now attack the enemy, there's a slight delay. Finally, when we create an animator controller, we also want to notify it whenever we attack. To do that, let's create a simple callback method. And we'll do this using a bit different syntax that we've done before. This time we'll write public event system.action and we'll call this action on attack. Now this is basically just a really quick and easy way to create a delegate with a return type of void, so we don't return anything, and with no arguments. We also go through and create the delegate in the same way we've done previously, but this is just a lot shorter and easier. Then down in our attack method, we'll simply make sure to trigger this. So if on attack is not equal to null, well then we want to call on attack. And you can see how little syntax is required here. And that should pretty much be it for our combat system. I wish I had some kind of happy dance animation for this guy to play. I think we need to spam Sebastian about that in the comments. <laughs> That's pretty much it for this video. Congratulations! If you made it this far, you've completed the entire gameplay part of this series. And you are truly awesome. Thank you so much for following along through all of these videos. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. From here, there's still a lot of stuff that you can add to your game. I recommend checking out some of my other videos to see if they might make your game better. I have one on creating a dialogue system, which I know a lot of RPGs need. Or maybe one on adding audio. If you want to create a larger and more interesting environment, definitely check out the Mayan Temple pack that we recently released on Dev Assets. And just subscribe for more general Unity goodness. So thank you again so much for watching. If you like this series and want to see similar content in the future, you can always support me at Patreon. Patreon is an awesome way for you to donate a monthly amount of your choosing. It really helps keep us going. If that sounds like something you want to do, you can go to patreon.com slash brekkies. And that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in August and a special thanks to Hans Haftun, Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, Jesper Mikkelsen, James P, Cyborg Mummy, Jason Latito, Aaron, Robert Bund, Husam Kazar and Judaman. If you want to become a patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash Thanks a lot guys.